Ready, John? Mm-hmm. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Film Photography Podcast. My name is Michael Rosso, and I'm here with Mr. John Fideli. Hey, what's up? And Mr. Matt Marash. Hey, Matt. Hey, what's going on, guys? <laughs> Today, we're going to talk about two things. <laughs> and the first topic, which is Matt for Matt Marash's uh, large format live. And we have our letter mailbag. And we're going to just dive right into large format live. Um, so just to give some quick background before Matt talks, large format live is Matt's YouTube channel, not this YouTube channel. <laughs> Matt's YouTube channel is going to have a live broadcast, large format live. Matt is putting some serious, serious, serious time into this. Matt, I'm super impressed. You sent over your, all your notes. I kind of want to be in before it happens and then we'll talk after it happens of what it took to prepare for a live YouTube broadcast, mm -hmm. how it actually goes down, and uh, then the, and then the follow up to like you know did it meet your expectations? Did you talk. did you achieve your goals? Because I'm I'm not uh, although myself <clears throat> and John have never done a live YouTube show. We used to do live Metal Land Showcase episodes, and they were a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of great they have their own charm much yeah. harder yeah to, so to do back then matt mirage is into large format film photography you've been doing your series large form <laughs> yeah you've been doing your series large format friday every friday a new instructional video and then somewhere mm -hmm. somehow a light bulb went on over your head and you said i'm gonna do this live and it's coming up this Sunday, what is the date, Matt? Uh, Sunday, I think it's the 31st, last day of May. Yeah, Sunday, May 31st, and it's going to be noon Eastern time. So I think for my buddies in the UK, that's uh, it's five o'clock. So everybody's going to have a chance. Check it out. Perfect. Tell us about it. Yeah, what are you going to do? Ma yeah, pit make, pitch it to oh. us like, like you want us to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> sure. So this all came about because I had... I had this dream a few years ago. I know this sounds really weird. I had this dream a couple of years ago, like 2017. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I was like, oh my gosh, I want to do a darkroom live stream. Like oh I want to actually do a, a real dream. Yeah. I want to do a darkroom live stream with like a three camera switch and we're printing and we're doing all this like high end stuff. And I know the technology is there. I just haven't seen anybody do it. And then fast forward to last fall. Uh, we were doing some promo stuff through Midwest Photo with uh, with Matt Day, and he's you know a huge film uh, film and digital YouTuber. Mostly film is what he's known for, and we got him into the darkroom at Midwest Photo, and we did a darkroom live stream. And to my knowledge, it was one of the first ones that was that was done like that. We had it live. We had someone running the cameras. We had a three camera switch, and it it was clunky. My audio was awful and there's so many challenges to it, but I was just like, I was really jazzed and I was like, Oh, I think I could do some more with this. And then I kind of slept on it for a while. I didn't act on it because like I was doing a million things. And now that I've got a little bit more time and kind of refocus on the large format Friday, I wanted to, I'm seeing more people actually doing darkroom live streams. And I put a little poll out there on the on my page saying, hey, if I did something live, what would you want to see? Would you want to see darkroom printing, developing? Uh, what if I did a shoot in the studio? And it got some, some decent response. And I was really surprised that everybody was uh, jazzed about seeing something live in the studio. And you don't see a lot of those because there's so much behind the scenes. There's so much production. You have like hair and makeup, styling, you know, if it's, if it's going to be fashion based. And if it's not fashion based, it's editorial. So now you've got to juggle locations and talent and waivers, you know, all that stuff goes on behind the scenes. And I just wanted to see if I could, this is the, the test run, you know, to see if I can do it, but we're going to do a multiple camera setup in my buddy Tariq's studio. So we're going to be downtown Columbus. Um, it's going to be just your standard fashion type environment. We're going to have multiple backgrounds, 
strobes. And we're going to be working with the large format camera. And if this is for somebody that has maybe never done a studio shoot like this before, or maybe if they already have done studio work, but didn't, you know, are trying to think, hey, is this something I could do with my, my big camera? Could I swap out my modern digital thing for my film camera? And what would it take to do that? So it's kind of like, you're going to, everyone's going to follow along and see if we can pull off a large format shoot, but also show it to everybody else and answer questions along the way. Yeah, the whole thing with live too is it has to be, it, you know, the only people that can get away with like a single camera live feed are if there's like babies at the zoo, then it's fine because they're adorable. But like when it's process and technique based, you have to kind of put the person that's watching in the driver's seat. So we're going to have multiple views and it's going to be, you're going to have a bird's eye view, but you're also going to feel like you're there checking out the process. Uh, without breathing over each other's shoulders. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. And are you yeah, putting so, yeah. are you putting a time restriction on on the, the the time of the program or no? Oh yes, definitely putting a time restriction. Uh, since since I'm doing promotion on this sort of thing, I want to. I don't want it to ramble on. Uh, I see a lot of streams that they could they could definitely do what they're trying to say in like 15 minutes or a half hour or an hour. And they just kind of like keep going and going. And if you don't hit a hard time, like it's time to do this. And I've, this is just from years of doing classes too. If you don't have a hard, a hard, like we're, we're breaking now, we're doing questions now, you're just going to be there forever. And uh, a lot of this, the equipment too, has its own limitations to juggle like this camera can only be on can only run for this long until i have to plug it in and then if i plug this one in i got it. so like you know it's it's years of playing around with all the latest tech to see okay if i do an hour long stream i can use this stuff which is more compact but if you know so mm -hmm. it's it's going to be fun but i'm anticipating an hour long shoot but we have we've booked out enough that if it goes into an hour and a half we're still going to be fine and uh, we plan on doing questions along the way. So there's going to be studio shoots. So if you've not done a studio shoot before, usually like talking about strobes and setups and ratios, all that fun stuff. We're going to be working with strobes. We're going to have some instant film. So you're actually going to get to see some of the results live, but not the actual like developed final sheets of film. So at least there'll be something to kind of say, oh yeah, these guys are doing it. Mm -hmm. Do you plan a follow-up video where are you going to reveal uh the 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 results of your darkroom work yeah um i'm not sure if it's going to be just like a standard um just like a standard video like a little five minute thing kind of summon it up or it might be a part of so i've also planned we'll, we'll see how it goes but i plan on capturing some isos of what's going on too so we can kind of cut together a recap and in that recap have the final results uh, the good news here is it's not just me on the shooting side, if it was, uh, we'd have to wait months <laughs> for the results. Uh, because we have Tariq on this as well, he is so, so good about getting results like turned around. I mean, he's, by the time I'm turning around digital files, he's turning around like these beautiful film scans. So mm -hmm. um, it also helps. He's got one of those uh, Jobo ATLs, the automatic Jobos that do everything. Oh, and those are so nice. he just like yeah he just goes right to his home dark room and gets that thing rolling so does it spin spoiled. oh does yeah it, it spins. it's it spins and as long as you keep it clean it will actually feed in the developer the water and then the fix so it it, right. it does the whole process yeah you know it'd be interesting john what's that mike uh if you matt one day could like shoot the jobo where mm -hmm. it spins right and you just oh, like put the camera in it <laughs> no no put it outside oh. a static shot it'd be like for film photography be like the yule log for film <laughs> photography <laughs> just have it for the just rolling the whole time yeah just rolling yeah well maybe good. that can be like the cutaway shot yeah just like it's that's the transition it's just rolling into the next ah. scene <laughs> so this is all very exciting i just want to tip off our our listeners and our viewers that this is coming up and you guys could see it right here, the URL of Matt's channel. You know, go to Matt's channel, not on this channel. People will be hanging out on our channel. Duh. I don't <laughs> see nothing. It ain't waking. Where is it? Go to Matt's channel. Smash that button over at Matt's channel. Ring that bell. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Not You're better ring. at that than I am. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, uh, Matt, maybe you could. Um, pull up 
uh, comments to our last podcast. Oh, sure thing. We we talked about comments, and then we, of course, talk about your hair. (laughs) The urban scarecrow, huh? And raw. Hey, we're back. We're back. Our last, by the way, if you hear some noises in the background, if you hear like, it's the FPP at work. <laughs> That's uh, the FPP shipping room where it's it's Justin or Joey K with. They're busy. A big tape gun. It's going. God. Yeah. They're so your orders out. It's taping your package. That's right. It's the yeah. first step to get uh, your package to you. The last episode that uh, we streamed on YouTube. Last episode. Uh, YouTube has <laughs> comments. And this episode was the big episode that we had Trev Leon and Caleb mm-hmm. Savage and Sean Augustson. Action Pack P. Joby. Uh, that was a big show. And big show. After, after recording it and then after editing it, mm. exhausted. Yeah, I was I was wiped the whole day after, and I didn't even have to edit, so I can't imagine yeah. how, how it went for you, Mike. Yeah, well, so, great guys, so <laughs> awesome guys, right? So, <laughs> what are people people are talking? What are people saying, Matt? There are yeah, we got twenty one comments on this so what? far. Uh, yeah, um, so first comment: loved hearing Sean's story and how he's passing it on to help other vets. Thanks for what you're doing. Photography is good for the soul. Mm-hmm. Uh, John Lapierre, I'm so glad to see you on YouTube. Love seeing who I've been listening to for years. Andrew, Andrew Bartram, first time after all these years to listen and watch via YouTube. I love it. The mix of old audio and video ads adds a new dimension to the main podcast listen. And what the what WTF is going on with Matt's hair. Nice. There we go. Oh, there well, go. we're just we're getting to the tip of that iceberg. Glenn Smith, my life is complete. Good work, guys. I love the new video format. Uh, the Unrecovering Photography Addict. Awesome video. Sean's a very talented photographer, and I'm proud to call a friend. Oh, nice. Oh, awesome. Christopher Dixon. Hey, team. It's good to see you on YouTube. I'm a casual listener to the podcast, so I may have missed the ongoing thread, but I was curious about Caleb's comment about using six by six cameras. As- Except Hasselblad. Why the exclusion? Yeah, I think he, he mentioned why he didn't like the Hasselblad. Oh, yeah. Hold, yeah. hold that thought. Uh, I, okay. I, 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 you know, I trimmed. It's a trim. What? Yeah, we got to keep it tight. That's do, you re- do you remember why... He specified non Hasselblad to answer this person. I think I th- I think it was. I, if I, I remember right, my father was killed by one. So I just <laughs> it doesn't like war anymore. No, I think it was because he he started with like I believe he started with like a Bronica. Yes. And uh, there was like there was too much buildup around the Hasselblad, and anybody that oh. saw him with the Bronica or the Kiev stuff would you know give him beef and i i've gotten that myself because i have one of those kiev finders on my hasselblad and it's like that's not an official hasselblad part and people oh my get very personal about it's hasselblad faux pas nikon guy 1960 film equals action packed uh our buddy darren riley haha you found the ballard video did a better job than i did i completely forgot oh nice (laughs) Uh, uh oh we got a comment on the remjet no boy 
Uh, here we go. Uh, regarding the rim jet on Vision 3, just pre wash the film with one teaspoon baking soda, 500 mils of lume water, shake vigorously. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, yeah, it's just how, how they do it. <laughs> oh, you lost Mike. There he Mike. Goes. Well, he's back. <laughs> I can't cut a break on the rim jet. You can't. I can't. So, Vision 3, oh. color motion picture film in your still camera. Mm hmm. You can process it C41 yourself, but you can't send it to a lab because Remjet is a black carbon base that will ruin the lab's equipment. So when you're doing it yourself, this black carbon base will come out in your developer and in the whole process. I started just with who's the gentleman who commented. I started just like him. I was using the baking soda. The baking mm -hmm. soda, the step, the whole step with the baking soda. And after a while, I just realized I'm like, it didn't make a difference. Like I've, mm -hmm. I've developed so many roles of vision three film. I just, I'm like, don't need it. And then your developer gets all cloudy and speckly with Remjet specs. And I just ignore it. And I just kept using that developer for my 30 plus roles. And it never made a difference. So as far as you know, no, I've developed all of my film. It all looked great. I'm really just relaying it by experience, but not commenting on what other people do. But everyone wants to kind of share and joy of how they do it. And it applies to yes. at Remjet, stop, stop bath, no stop bath. Like everyone wants to share their experience. All of that, yeah. And I think it's good. So I think people yeah, watching... Anything that's not nailed down in film photography. Yeah. Yeah. I think people who are watching who have a certain way of doing things, I'm just relaying that, hey, you don't need the baking soda step or the REM jet remover step. Give it a shot without it or not. Just keep doing what you're doing. So I just want to mm -hmm. be or fair to everyone. Reality. I just want to be fair to everyone that everyone has their technique. It's sort of like asking a question on a Facebook forum of... What is your scan? You know, what is your, what is the best scanner to use? What is the best color film to use? And you're going to get all the comments and everyone is absolutely sincere. And that person believes that this film is the film to shoot because yeah. that's their experience. And it's, it's all beautiful. Yeah. Everything <laughs> is beautiful in its own way. You know, I think, I think even uh, Joby was mentioning this a little bit on the last episode when we were talking about, but one thing that's kind of like different about moving to like a Facebook group when it comes to questions about stuff, it, it's very hard to kind of catalog and keep like a, a, like a real thread going about stuff. And that's where, you know, it still is nice to have places oh. like forums and Flickr because what you'll get otherwise is they, you know, those feeds are prioritized to pushing up the latest stuff. So the, the same questions can get you know, asked day after day after day. And if you've been around in that, it's, it's kind of annoying, but at the same time, it's, it's a good sign that you have that many people that are you know, freshly interested mm -hmm. and sharing their stuff. And yeah, it's just, it's the, the medium is kind of making it a, a little harder than, uh, yeah. than it would appear. Kenny Toomey uh, writes and says, dude, I have to ask politely, what's with Matt's hair? Yeah. <laughs> it's a phase, right? Unless it helps hold the dark bag higher when focusing large format cameras. That's your main motivation, right? I, you know what? I need to find a spray or gel that will hold up the dark cloth without frumping the hair oh, to the yeah. side. You got to put like straws in there. Hi yeah. Straws. yeah. Build it up like a nest. <laughs> you should call David Lynch. What the hell? This is I the second time you, you called out the David Lynch thing. I got I, I got to get on his product. Whoa. Uh, this is from Dana Brigham. It says, Mike, it seems that in the darkness of this health crisis, Matt's hair is turning out to be a bright, shining beacon. <laughs> or is it loose? Of hope. Well, sort of. Just thought. Just a thought. How about an FPP photo contest? Photo films and cine film clips only in honor of Matt's hair. What object in nature or what man-man structures remind the FPP fans of Matt's hair? Can the FPP fans meet or even exceed the volume and height of Matt's hair? Maybe someone will go full Andy Warhol on the picture of Matt's hair. Go a little higher, John. Oh. How's that? Andy Warhol, you say? And there's Ansel Adams. 
photo entry for Matt's hair. That does look like your hair, Matt. <laughs> I'm all about it. That is actually a really hilarious contest. And uh, let's do Mike, it. It, it, yeah, let, one, let's do it. And let's figure out a, a prize. I, you know, we can like give away some large format film. I'm all in. This sounds like a fantastic okay. contest. Okay, let's, this is an impromptu FPP contest. Probably the first one in like eight years. <laughs> Folks, all you need to do is send us a picture of something in nature that resembles Matt's hair. Keep it clean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we'll pick like the top five. Mm. And I'll go into the FPP fridge, which is jam-packed with all sorts of... I mean, there's all sorts of weird stuff in the FPP fridge. And I'm not talking like weird, like low ISO, like minus 10. I'm talking about like FK25... I'm talking about Ooh, like some, yeah. some infrared film. Ooh. I'm talking about some like, you know, quarter packs of large format film that's been in the deep freeze. So, so nice. send us a picture of something that represents, looks like Matt's hair in nature. If you know, you could see it, you take a picture that's of great. it. If you see like Matt's hair in a piece of toast or, <laughs> you know, if you're putting a sandwich together or you made a cake, whatever, whatever you, if you see it, just wherever in life you may see Matt's hair. Yes. That's, this is great. The potential. I, I love the idea. Podcast at filmphotographyproject.com. What? You, do, you do need to email it to us and we'll gather them if, if anyone sends anything. And then we'll, we'll have, have, I'll have a grab bag full of prizes here. Yes. Oh, on, in your note, write like what you shoot. Hey, I shoot 35. Hey, I shoot 120. Whatever. And Dana also uh, wrote that he sent in a bunch of point-and-shoot cameras. Oh, good. Um, uh, so thank you for that as well, Dana. The point-and-shoot cameras, this is our school camera donation program. The point-and-shoot cameras, uh, there has been a demand. First of all, it's a whole other topic all of itself. Point-and-shoot 35-millimeter cameras are the rage right now. Crazy. The rage. And schools uh, have been requesting them that um, – do more of a focus on composition and they're usually younger students to get them started with film photography. So I don't have to worry about the technical aspects too much. Just worry. Makes about sense. Composition. Correct. So we have sent batches of point and shoot cameras to a few different schools. Uh, well, folks, I have like a whole bunch more letters. Oh, a bunch. I mean, a bunch, a bunch more as well as our, a whole list of new FPP peers. These are folks who subscribe. Yes, they subscribe and donate to the FPP. Those are still coming in strong. It 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 really is wonderful because it's it's uh, it's fueling our ongoing school camera donation program, and it's funding this whole enterprise. And then once once the COVID restrictions are lifted, there's going to be all. I think you know things going on that that you guys can be involved with and it gives us Meats. the the funds to do things like bring in the FPP folks or send the FPP folks here, send the FPP folks there, send Fredo to the airport, yeah. send Fredo to go pick up so-and-so. <laughs> send Fredo off to do this, send Fredo off to do that. <laughs> I'm not stupid. <laughs> I'm smart. Isn't that what he says? Yes, he does. The oh, Fredo man. meltdown. You ever see The Godfather? You know something? You're going to see something now that is really, really good, huh? Are we going to roll it, fellas? Yeah? yeah? Good. The Urban Scarecrow. Huh? Watch. It's a great life. Ranch and roll.
revenge. 